Don't forget, if you're an Ethics Club member, you can donate your flying hours to Models for Heroes. So welcome back to Behind the Sprue. In this episode, part two, we're going to be looking at the research that they do before making a design. So the, the, before they make the tooling and all the CAD work, uh, the research that's involved. Uh, it's quite a lot of information, but it is a short video, so bear with me. Make sure you've got your coffee ready um, and let's have a look. Hi everyone, I'm Luke, the researcher. Um, I'm just going to talk you through what I do day to day um, and throughout sort of a project's life cycle. Um, so the, the first step really is um, how do we pick a product? Um, and hopefully I'll go through that a bit. So product selection, as you can tell, is crucial to the business. Uh, getting it right, you know, makes us a profit or a loss, but it also means we keep the customers happy or unhappy. You know, if we're, if we're delivering stuff you don't want and it doesn't get bought, then we don't, haven't got a job anymore. Um, so um, we've sort of got three categories we have to look at each year. Um, we want new capex, so that's stuff we're going to spend the money on to divert new, essentially. Um, stuff that we're going to refresh and re-release, and vintage classics as well. So stuff that was made in the 60s and we bring back sort of fan favourites, if you will. Um, so when we look at new capex, you've also got uh, year two and year three capex, which starts to sound a bit complex, but essentially when we design a model, um, we're looking to see if we can do extra releases on top of that. Um, so, you know, you'll do the, the kind of saber, and then you'll look at what we're going to do in the second or third year um, by adding a few extra parts, change the box art, um, and in this case, it was the F86, F40. Um, refresh and re-release and vintage classics is a bit different um, because you can't just keep adding to your catalogue year after year as much as we'd like to, because um, you won't sell them all. Um, and you've got to rotate, you've got to cut, sort of keep that range fresh. Um, so you've got to kill products every year. You've got to get rid of stuff, um, which is always really hard. Probably one of the hardest choices we face is what do we get rid of? Um, not only because some of them are our favorite models, but also because um, sometimes the numbers are so close, you know, it's, it's a case of a bit of a gut feeling. And um, there's a lot of science that goes into it as well. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so that's sort of what we're looking to do. We're trying to fill those categories every year um, and kill off a few products every year. Right, we've decided, right, our new CapEx project, what are we doing? Um, we've got a few, few things to look at. So are there any gaps in the market? Is there anything that's really obvious, or maybe not so obvious, that no model company's done in ages? Um, you know, the Walrus is an example of that that you see. Um, uh, and there's plenty of others. You know, if there's it's not been done, great, let's jump in. But the model market's so evolved now, everything seems to have been done in some capacity. There are exceptions, thankfully. Release schedule. So as I was sort of saying on year two, year three CapEx, you want to be able to release a model and then the year after add parts, and ideally every year after that keep adding parts. But there's there's limitations to what you can do in plastic. So we're looking at that. Can we get more than one release out of a model? Um, the Seeking at 70 seconds is a really good example of that. Um, there's loads of releases you can do. Growing ranges. So you don't just want to release a product by itself um, with nothing around it, because people like to build collections. They like to build similar subjects. So the Buccaneer is a good example of Fleet Air Realm. You know, we're, we're very aware people like to build that. So you sort of try and cater that. Um, and, you know, Cold War Jets, Vampires are a good example of that. There are rule breakers. There are things that don't fit the mold, things that we shouldn't do, or, or on paper it looks like we shouldn't do. The Swift is maybe an example of that. You know, the, the release schedule after that, there isn't one. It's a single release. Um, but again, there's a gap in the market, maybe. So rule breakers in some terms, you know, in some ways, but also if there's a gap, it's great. And of course, Previous sales. We have to look at what has sold before, what's going to sell again, what's going to make us the money. And yes, there's a Spitfire up there because they make us lots of money, they sell lots, people enjoy Spitfires. Um, and also, sort of the reputation of an aircraft. Um, so, I think part of the reason we sell more Spitfires than Hurricanes is because it's the more glamorous aircraft. You know, it's everyone seems to be a fan of the Spitfire. Um, and it goes for all the other ranges as well. There'll be sort of a an icon of that range, um, and then ones that are lesser known. Um, so we look at that. Um, I'll go through a few examples, because that's a lot of information, and I've tried to boil it down as quick as I can. Um, so uh, 
The first one being Hawker Hunter. Um, our boss has bought a one-to-one -one Hawker Hunter. Um, but when we were designing the kit, um, we had to look, well, when we went to go look to see what we could do, uh, the part of this is there's a bit of a gap in the market. So at 48, Hunter hadn't really been done in a while. So, you know, we use the, the modeler's favorite tool, scale makes quite a bit, see what's out there, uh, as well as our knowledge as, as modelers. Um, and, you know, you can look at the Academy at Italeri one. Um, even though there might be more recent releases, you go, oh, they released that last year. Yes, but the tooling's from 97 or the tooling's from 78 and it's been reboxed 20 times. Um, so we have to look at stuff like that, are there gaps? Um, is it, you know, we're Airfix, we're a British company. Um, and when we pick subjects, quite often that's our niche, British subjects, something that connects everyone to, you know, the motherland, shall we say. Um, <laughs> has to be iconic. Um, as I was saying about Spitfire, um, everyone knows a hunter, maybe after 2015 for different reasons, but it was an iconic jet of its time um, and it was an air show regular. But also uh, the research is readily available, which makes my job easier. <laughs> but that's not a reason to pick it. It's just a nice side effect. Um, I put a little con down there, which is lack of enthusiasm, because something we noticed with the hunter um, was maybe there's a gap because no one wants a hunter. We, we haven't found that, thankfully. Um, but you do have to question it. Why has no one built that? Why has no one done that model? Um, and it keeps us awake at night. <laughs> uh, another example is 70 Second Sea King. As I was saying on the first one, um, you know, release schedule, making sure you've got enough legs in the model to go, go the distance and sell lots of different variants. Um, you know, and adding to a range as well. So uh, something that some of you might notice is rotaries missing from the range a bit. And uh, it's one of my passions is to, you know, I like helicopters, so uh, it's, it's a nice subject. Um, and there's always the possibility to expand. So you might design for two or three models, um, but then in 10 years time, you might turn around and go, right, what have we got in the tool bank that we can change slightly and bring back out um, to make it significantly different? Something that's a bit odd, um, you know, by, we don't modify the tooling, um, but we might add parts. Uh, but again, cons, uh, you can't leave the Sikorsky variants of the Seeking if you're doing the Western. So you immediately tie your hands, but, you know, one hand behind your back um, with that sort of thing. Uh, one example of uh, getting the legs out of the tooling, releasing lots of um, from the original tool, is the P51, which I believe you designed that. Um, and, and trying to add parts each time and do a new model. So, Luckily, this year, we've sort of come full circle. So we released the original one um, way back. You'll have to tell me the year. <laughs> Test, testing memory. 16, possibly, 17, 16. And you'll see it sort of every year since then, we, we brought out a new version of that. And down the bottom is our newest one, uh, the Milli G boxing, which is sort of back to the original part count um, as the original release. Um, but you'll see here this, this spreadsheet that looks very dull, and not very interesting, actually breaks down what parts are going to be in each boxing. And this is something Matt and all the other designers will put together to work out, right, where are these parts sitting in the tool? Can we sort of add them onto an extra box and, and stuff like that? So you'll see, um, you know, F51B, P51B late, um, there'll be two different versions that we, we account for. So it's a lot of planning before we've even made the model. And uh, I think I might be short if I don't mention starter sets, obviously quite a new range. Um, with this is sort of, again, a bit different to how we'd normally select new CapEx because you're looking at very much what's famous, you know, what do kids know. So Spitfire and Red Arrow's Hawk are, are obvious choices there and the, the Firefly and the Tiger. But also you've got the, the civilian stuff, which is being pushed for more because more and more parents don't want to buy war machines, let's say. They want to buy something that's you know, not, not to do with war. Um, and We've got the supercar range for that. And Dale, you wanted to say a few bits you mentioned? Did I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, you, well, you can ask questions throughout if you're all happy with asking questions throughout this. That's the first thing that just came to mind as soon as I sat down. Um, but obviously, there, there's a lot of focus on starter sets. Uh, there has been over the last couple of years with the new Spitfire, uh, the new Hawk. Uh, the tanks are obviously new in 72nd. And then this year with the um, with the supercars, you're going to see that next year as well. Okay, so we have got a five year plan with starter sets. And then after that, 
we don't know where we're going to go with it, but we will have a significant range of new tools, tools for beginners from the outset, uh, under starter set boxings. All right. So basically, give you a heads up. You know, next year's product announcement might not be as glamorous as the enthusiast would hope for. You know, there might not be a 148 scale Buccaneer. There might not be a 124 scale Spitfire because a lot of stuff has been focused on uh, bringing out um, new starter set tooling for obvious reasons. Uh, and once we've gone through that program, then we're back on track with, with you know, the enthusiast models. So yeah, so obviously we've, up until what, last year, uh, we had loads of hanging gift sets, what we called starter sets. Um, and the toolings for those were predominantly from our classic range. Okay, so they've been the products have been designed to be a classic kit for the enthusiast. Um, but there was a gap in the market within the starter set gift set range. And of course, I'm looking at, or we're looking at as a business, um, where those products sit in the market. So you're never going to sell classic kits into Tesco's, for example. All right, the other supermarkets are available. Um, they they're going to want gift sets because their consumers are are you know looking for something to do at the weekend. They're a first time buyer. We're coming away from putting classic tooling into starter sets. All right, because whilst the build might be fine, uh, it will be a new tool from certainly the last um, eight or ten years, being a Hornby tool. Um, it's still not going to give the beginner modeler the best experience. And actually, Matt, you cover this in one of your videos, don't you? So, um, where, you, where you talk about um, you know, the difference between the Mark 5C Classic and the Mark 5C gift set uh, and, and why they're different. And if you look at it, they're both the same 70 second scale Mark 5C Spitfire. All right. Part counts are very different. The way that the uh, parts have been split on the sprue is completely different. So the way the guys did that was design the Mark 5C Spitfire shape, and Matt's going to talk about that with the Ansel and everything, and then essentially save the file twice, save as. You've got two projects now. One was then split up to be a starter set and cont contains 26 parts for that Spitfire. The classic kit um, is a classic kit. It's 76 parts. When you build them and put them next to each other, and Pam has said this himself, when you put them next to each other, you have no idea which is which. All right? It's, a, it's cockpit detail bits and pieces, but by the time you put the canopy on, you have no idea which is which. But for a, for a new, uh, for a beginner, and it might not be child, it could be an adult, um, only having 26 parts to put together, none of the fiddly bits, because we've moulded them on or we've just left them out altogether, will hopefully mean for a better experience to begin with. All right, so that's what the team have done a fantastic job in doing over the last couple of years, and that's what you're seeing here. You know, if uh, Audi next year turn around and say, I want a 124 scale Spitfire with paints and blues, I'll be like, okay, well, this is how much it costs. How many are you going to buy from me? Mm. And if those talks are positive, then they will get one. You know, so that's what we're always having to juggle that. So there you go. That's how Airfix do the research before the design work. Um, as a, you'll remember, there is three parts to this little series of Behind the Sprue in relation to the R&D work that goes on at Airfix. In part three, we will be talking about 3D scanning. So make sure you tune in for that. Make sure you got your coffee and it's, as I say, not an overly long video. So hope you enjoy it. But for now, that's it. Thank you very much for watching um, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye for now.